Welcome to exercise 10 in the practice parts. Let's get started by sketching on the YZ plane. And I'm going to sketch out a nice little path. I'll start with a line that goes just below the origin. And then I'll choose a tangent arc. And once I've made my arc, I'll make another tangent arc, tangent to my first tangent arc. And then I'll finish with the line moving upwards. I'll add a tangent constraint between the line and the arc. We'll give this a dimension, right? I'll give this line an overall length of 30. And then I can go from, how about the bottom of this line to the top of this line. We'll go a distance of 235. I'll give this a radius of 100. We'll go equal and make sure that both of our arcs have an equal radius. And then from the origin to the top of this line, we'll go a distance of 100. And we are fully constrained there. So let's deactivate the sketch. And I'll choose my XZ plane and sketch on that. On the origin, I'll draw a circle. And we'll give the circle a diameter of 76. There we go. We'll deactivate the sketch. And we'll do an additive sweep from there along the path. Now, you'll notice we did not draw our circle at the very end of the path, but a Libra knew what we were about and went ahead and filled in both sides of our path for us, which is a fun and good feature that makes it way easier. Next, I'll want to run a mirror. So we'll grab the mirror feature and we'll select the XY plane. And then that, now that we've successfully mirrored it, let's go ahead and hollow these, um, let's hollow this body out. So using the shift key, I've selected three faces. I'm gonna select shell, and I'm gonna make my standard thickness 10 millimeters and say, okay. So now that we have what would look like hollow pipes. Let's go ahead and um, put some flanges on the end. So I'm going to choose one of my ends here and activate a sketch. I'll project this inner edge with association. And then I'll select a circle. And we'll give this a diameter of 150. We'll deactivate and extrude this a distance of 15. And then we'll want to work on the inside of this just a little bit, right? We'll highlight a sketch here. We'll create a circle and I can choose the concentric to make sure that our circle stays in the middle of that edge. And then we'll grab the dimension and give this a diameter of 66. We'll want to do an extrude cut now and I'll go a distance of 10. Of course, I wanted to specify a negative there, or I can simply hit reverse, and now I'm cutting into the face. Next, I wanna do the same thing, but on this bottom face. So activate a sketch, I'll create a circle. We'll go a distance of 150. I'll project this inner edge with maintained association and then I can deactivate and extrude a distance of 15. And likewise, in much the same fashion that we already have been doing, I'll highlight this face here, activate a sketch, we'll create a circle And we'll go with a distance of 66 this time. Deactivate and cut extrude a distance of negative 10. From here, I would like to um, select this face, maybe add a hole 
feature right here. And we'll make sure that this is a height of 15 and this is a diameter of 16. And I'll click on this face and you can see we've added a hole. I'll use my dimension now and go from this hole center to the origin. I'll give that a vertical dimension of 100. From the origin to this hole center, we'll give this a dimension of 58. And we should be fully constrained there. So we'll say OK. And we simply need to do a hole pattern now. So we'll select circular pattern. It already knows my hole. We'll select this instance pattern and we'll select our center here. And there we have a pattern of four holes around our selected center. So I'm going to say OK on that. And next we'll want to do some mirroring, which I usually find to be the fun part. I'll select my extrude, my cut, my hole, and I already have my feature pattern up. I'll select my mirror plane to mirror across. It looks like we have a full preview and it looks good. So we'll select OK on that. The next thing that we'll want to do is work on a hole pattern on this bottom flange. So we'll select hole. And let's go with a few dimensions here. I'll go with a vertical relation to the origin and I'll give this a height off of the origin of 58. And of course, we'll stick with our 16 millimeters here and our depth of 15 should be fine. So we'll say OK on that. And of course, we'll want to pattern that. Let's go with four as well. We'll go with a circular pattern, four holes. We'll go with the center and OK. So now with our holes done, let's add some fillets. I'll add a fillet here, but instead of half a millimeter, let's go with eight. And I'll fill it this edge, this edge, and this edge. I will apply that fillet. I'll take a look at adding a radius. Let's add a radius right here of 20 millimeters and apply that. So let's take a look at what this final part looks like and let's talk a little bit about the history tree here because I do see an interesting trend if I go to inspect and I select a precise section view and I select the YZ plane to apply my section on. You can see that our walls are a good constant thickness due to the shell but because of our fillet, we have an area of local thickness that's more thick than the rest of our walls. That might be undesirable depending on what kind of design that you're going for. And this is a pretty good demonstration of things that we can do to uh, remedy that, right? It's probably pretty obvious that we can take our history tree and roll it back to just before the shell, but after the mirror. and I can add in my fillet there. So if I select my edge here and I go to model and I choose fillet, I can add my 20 millimeter fillet by rolling back, of course. And then when I do my shell, it shells the fillet to the correct selection. Uh, I'm gonna delete my fillet though, and I'll generate to last feature. Uh, another option that I think is a little bit more efficient is I can simply take my fillet 14 and drag it to be just above my shell. And that redoes the order of how my history tree is built so that the fillet is automatically accompanied as part of the shell if we wish to have a constant thickness there. So I think this is a good exercise in uh, how the history tree can be reordered to give you different results based on what you want. So it's a good example of how we would edit a tree after we're done with the part if we decide that uh, we'd rather have a constant thickness there. So uh, I hope this was helpful, and uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next exercise.